That's right, this is all radioactive. Now the reason why all of these items are radioactive has something to do with the color. Now this particular color back in the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s was really only achieved by using uranium oxide in the glaze. And so the uranium that was used in these glazes that gives it this burnt orange type of red color to all these ceramics, that's what makes all of these radioactive. And some of them kind of vary in radiation depending on how much glaze was used and the color of the glaze. I've seen some that are a very vibrant red that are very radioactive. And what I mean by very radioactive is like probably like around a thousand times above background radiation, sometimes uh, 2,000 times above background radiation. Now that may seem like a lot, but it actually isn't in the grand scheme of things. Now, you may be thinking, well, why did they use radioactive material? Well, this is the 20s and the 30s and the 40s when they were really going full speed ahead using uranium in the glazes for ceramics like these and for tile work. At that time, I'm sure some people knew it was radioactive, but it really didn't bother anybody. Uh, uranium was kind of seen as a waste product or a product that was more aligned for this type of use. It wasn't used in nuclear bombs or nuclear power at that time because at that time, none of those things existed. This was before they actually knew about the fission of the atom, uh, about the fission of uranium atom in particular. So uranium only had this one particular use uh, as a commercially viable product. It was left over from the extraction of radium. And radium was very valuable back then. Radium had a bunch of uses in the medical community, in hospitals for treatments of cancer and stuff like that. And it was also used in other things like tonics and a bunch of other stuff where you should not be ingesting radium, but it was still considered to be extremely valuable. Uranium, on the other hand, wasn't considered to be that valuable. It was just seen as a waste product. And so it was this leftover waste product that was used as a pigment. They figured that they, they introduced this into glazes. They can make this extremely vibrant uh, orange, burnt orange, red type of color. And these are all uh, pretty radioactive. Normal background radiation is around 35 counts per minute. Uh, these can give off anywhere between 20,000 and 50,000 counts per minute. And so they're quite a bit more radioactive than background, but as far as dangerous sources go, they're not even close. Usually when something's like in the couple hundred, you know, millions of counts per minute, that's when you start getting into deadly radiation. Or if you're looking at dose rates, like with sieverts or REMS, usually like two to four sieverts of radiation in an hour is fatal. These do not produce anywhere near that amount of dose rate. In fact, let's uh, turn on the Geiger counter here. So as you can hear, these are radioactive. Now this doesn't sound that bad, does it? That's because I have my gamma filter on here. If I take this off, it's a much different story. And the reason for that is because the type of radiation that is coming off of here. This filter is mainly designed to pick up on gamma radiation and to give you a dose rate based off of gamma radiation. And so it's going to block the majority of the radiation coming off of here, which is in the form of alpha and beta radiation. So alpha radiation is like uh, helium nuclei, like uh, two protons and two neutrons flying off of this stuff all the time. It will well, for billions of years. And then you also have electrons, which are beta particles flying off of here very fast. And they go about six feet in the air before they're stopped just by air molecules. So uranium has a half-life of about four and a half billion years. So over that time period, that uranium will try and become stable. That's what the whole uh, act of a element emitting radiation is for it to try and become stable because all these elements are unstable that come after uranium as well. And so it keeps decaying, it keeps you know, letting out an electron, letting out a positron, letting out an alpha particle. When uranium finally decays down to its stable form, it turns into lead. 
But before it turns into that lead, it has to go through all of these other radioactive elements to get to that point. And so uranium will turn into radium and all these other uh, elements that emit gamma radiation. Uranium that has been processed out of ore has all of those other materials separated out of, out of it because they're all chemically different than uranium. And so it's actually not that hard to do. And so a lot of these uh, plates and bowls and cups and all these ceramics, they have pure uranium in it. But given enough time, this uranium will decay into those other elements. It just takes a very long period of time. So around 1943, 1945, the government put a stop to civilians using uranium in ceramics like this dinnerware or in tiles. Uh, they didn't do this for any health reasons. They did it because they needed all that uranium for the war effort, mainly for the Manhattan Project and in developing the first atomic bomb. This color was also very popular. And actually this color commanded a, a elevated price as opposed to some of the other ceramics that were made in the exact same design. Because the uranium was actually a little bit more expensive to use than some of the other stuff, but it was also just more sought after. And it produced like these super vibrant colors like you're seeing with the, all these plates. But it's also not the only colors. There have been uh, creams and some greens and grays and blues that do have some uh, little bits of uranium in there. So now I have never really run across anything as rare as this. Now this may seem like a simple ashtray to you, but to me when I found this, I was actually kind of in disbelief because this is using a black glaze on here, which as far as I know is made using uranium. And just to show you how radioactive it is, but this is giving me around 30,000 counts per minute. Now that's about a thousand times above background radiation. So it's kind of cool to find stuff like this in antique shops. I found this one actually in Colorado, pretty close to the Coors Brewing Company. Uh, the lady that was at the antique shop said that these were actually made by Coors and uh, they were a promotional item. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting to use an ashtray uh, and actually glaze it in uranium oxide. But hey, glad I found it. The best practices, uh, if you're gonna get into collecting these, would be uh, uh, just um, you know, find them in antique shops and you can actually store these inside of your house. You could actually have them out in the open. The radiation isn't too penetrating. It can go about six feet in open air, uh, the beta radiation. Uh, but it's not very damaging. Uh, you would actually have to be very close to these because the, the closer you get to these, the more intense the radiation gets. And so being like right here is <laughs> the, probably the most intense or laying my face down on there. Um, but if you have these just in a display case, that display case is actually going to block a lot of the radiation. So if you have a display case made of wood and glass or something like that, or even plastic, like, like plexiglass, that will actually block a good majority of the radiation coming off of objects like this because it doesn't produce, these objects don't produce a lot of gamma radiation. They do produce some, but uh, not enough to really be um, a problem for anybody. Uh, a lot of the radiation, like I said before, is mainly alpha and beta radiation, which is blocked pretty easily by glass, wood, plastic, stuff like that. And so if you wanted to keep these in your house, uh, they'd be totally fine. As far as I know, they don't off gas a lot of radon because uh, it takes so long for uranium to get to that uh, decay series, which is like right around uh, radium, for it to uh, start producing radon. These will produce a little bit of radon, but nothing compared to like a radium watch or a radioactive gauge that used radium paint to make it glow. So these are fairly safe to keep inside the house. I would say not to use them to uh, eat off of because um, I think uh, just the, you know, you don't wanna tempt fate to see if you're gonna be ingesting uh, uranium. Uh, it'd probably take a long time for you to have any type of health effects, but uh, uranium uh, 
can kind of cause problems with kidneys. Like people that worked as glazers for uh, these companies that made this type of stuff that worked with the pigments. Uh, I see a lot of their obituaries and it seems uh, a good majority of them actually died from kidney failure, which is interesting to think about because of how the exposure of uranium works. But anyway, if you want to support this channel, I'd say go over to Patreon and become a member over there. I do post uh, behind the scenes stuff, uh, maps of the places I've been to, also uh, radiation maps that are generated using the Radicode 101 is like raw data. So you can actually look that up and see like where the most radioactive spots are that I go to if you wanted to go out there yourself and check it out. Uh, and also I, a little bit more faster to answer questions there. And it would be a huge help to me uh, for people to um, support this channel over there. Uh, I mean, just watching these videos is a huge help and I do greatly appreciate it. It's just uh, sometimes uh, the AdSense off of YouTube is uh, not as stellar as it is some other times. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Later.